Today we are finally checking out this underrated pocket rocket, the Suzuki Swift Sport. The keyword is Sport, because this ain't no regular Swift. I've reviewed a Swift Sport before, but it was just a walk around review, so today we'll focus more on the driving experience and the pros and cons of owning a Swift Sport. To spice things up a bit, today we'll start with the conclusion and end with the introduction. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's exactly what we're gonna do. So, in conclusion, the answer is no. Welcome to another video. Just a quick fun fact before we continue with our conclusion. The Swiss Sport I'm currently testing right now is one of the cars that we're racing at Simola in May. Check the number plate. LB20XTGP. That's the car. And it was driven by Kumbi. If you don't know Kumbi, you don't know cars. In terms of looks, this car is just gorgeous. I don't know whether it's the color or what, but believe it or not, it turns heads everywhere I go. People love it. But as soon as I tell them the price, they lose interest. Some still think it's worth it. I have listened to a lot of your arguments about the price of the Suzuki Swift Sport, both on social media and in real life. So now allow me to share my thoughts and we'll just jump straight to the cost of ownership. A Swift Sport starts from 420,000 rands for the manual variant and for the auto you pay 443,000 rands. The car you are looking at right now has an automatic transmission, so that means it costs 443,000 rands. In 2022, around September, this very same car was going for only 400,000 rands. In just the space of under a year, the price increased by a whole 43,000 rands. So if you finance a 443,000 rands car for 5 years with no deposit and no balloon payment at an interest rate of 11.75%, your installment will be roughly 9,800 for a Swift. As soon as you factor in the cost of fuel, your monthly car expenses will cross the 10,000 rands mark for a Swift. Regarding insurance, I want us to do a little exercise. Guess the insurance premium of this car and post your answers in the comment section. Just to give you a clue, most of you already know that I'm using Naked and the insurance premium for my 2022 Swift GL is 1,083 rands. Use that as your guide. And if you are wondering why am I using Naked, it's because of the cover pause feature. I pause accident cover when I'm not driving my car and my premium drops to 542 rands for stationary cover. Just like now, I'm currently living with the Swift Sport and my Swift GL is on stationary cover because I'm not driving it. If you want to check out Naked to see what they can offer you, there's a link in the description and also pinned in the comment section. Check them out even if you don't want to sign up, just for comparison purposes. Now back to the price debate. Between 2020 and 2021, this car was going for just under 350,000 rands. In just roughly 3 years, the price increased by almost 100,000 rands and the car is still the same, nothing changed. I like Suzuki but guys, let's be honest. They successfully pushed this car to a tricky position with the pricing and it only makes sense in a vacuum. As soon as you consider other cars you can get for 443,000 rands, used or brand new, you realize that no man, 400,000 rands is a lot of money. And I have a solution for Suzuki which I will share later in the video. Enough about price politics, let's move on to driving thrills. And I can tell you now, 103 kilowatts and 230 newton meters of torque in a small hatch like this one will definitely put a smile on your face. It has more or less the same power as a BMW 118i, but the 118i produces less torque and it starts from 691,000 rands. That's where Suzuki Swift Sport becomes a more attractive option despite its polarizing price. Look at cars like your facelift Polo R-Line for instance. An airline starts from 450,000 rands before extras, yet it only has a 1 liter 3 cylinder engine producing only 85 kilowatts and 200 newton meters of torque. 
I was offered an R line as a courtesy car when my GTI was giving me problems, and I can tell you for free, that car is too expensive for what it offers. It can't even stand a chance against the Swift Sport. Unlike the normal Swift, the handling of the Swift Sport is quite impressive. You throw it around corners with confidence and the power is manageable whether you are a pro driver or just an amateur. Try doing silly things in a performance BMW or a GTI as an amateur driver and see what's going to happen. If you drive a lot on uneven roads, you'll struggle because the suspension is a tad bit too firm compared to the normal Swift. You will feel every bump and sometimes the car scrapes if you are not careful because of the lower ground clearance. Performance-wise, Suzuki claims that the top speed is just over 200 km per hour and there's only one way to prove that. The claimed average fuel consumption is 6.1 liters per 100 km but I'm always hovering around 7. The lowest figure I achieved was 6.9 liters per 100 km, driving like a normal human being. One thing worth noting is that in a swift sport, you can't switch driving modes. It is always in, I guess, sport mode, since it's a swift sport. I tried my best to test the car in various driving situations. City driving, open road driving, short distance, long distance, day and night and I was happy with the driving dynamics. Inside, this is what you get. The car has a rear camera and parking sensors, six airbags and some nice sport seats. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay is also standard, but you have to connect with a cable and the audio system is bad. Suzuki should consider partnering with proper sound system manufacturers like JBL, Sony or Bang & Alufsen because the current factory order is really bad in almost all their models. That's why I fitted an aftermarket sub in my car. I won't repeat the things I covered in my previous Swift Sport review, so I think we're almost done for today. Regarding the issue of pricing, I think Suzuki Auto SA must do a price hold on the Swift Sport for maybe six to nine months, because that thing of increasing prices every chance they get is not helping anyone. Sooner or later the price will cross the 500,000 rands mark. And once you cross 500k, it's game over. So do I think the Swift Sport is a great car? Um, yes. If you are a true petrol head, you'll be fairly satisfied with this car. When it comes to transmission, I think it's a matter of personal preference. I prefer the auto cause you can switch it to a semi-manual mode and use pedal shifters to shift gears yourself. I said semi-manual mode because if you try to push the car hard, the pedal shifters are of no use because the system will default back to automatic. Now the big question is, would I spend 443,000 rands on a Swift? Well you already know the conclusion. And if you browse the used car market, you can find a low mileage Swift Sport for under 350,000 rands. Forget about the joystick part, there I was just fooling around. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more car content in Amazon's context.